Hi there everyone and welcome back to my channel. This recording is actually a little snippet from an actual lesson that took place where I explain how to fill in gaps in the initial rates method tables that can come up in the OCRA and AQA examinations. Please excuse the slightly different audio as it was taken while sat in front of a whole group of students, but hopefully you do find it helpful to hear how I would answer one of these questions in the exam. So for some scenarios, using the initial rates method tables, we are given the rate equation up here in the top left hand corner. So as you can see up there, we've already been told that the rate equation for this particular set of data is rate equals the rate constant K times the concentration of A, which is first order, times the concentration of B, which is second order. Now, straight away, what I would do to remind myself of that in the exam, it was write that onto these here. I'd have first order for that. And I'd have second order for that. Straight away. Because we know then some common changes that might take place on the rate of reaction when these are adjusted. And actually, we can see that for the very first one. For instance, if we look between experiment one and experiment two, what we're going to look at first is, can we fill in this gap just here? So can we fill in that gap, which is for the initial rate of experiment two, without actually having to resort to what we'll use for the other gaps, which is a rearranged version of the rate equation. So from experiment one to experiment two, we've got the initial concentration of A has no change. The initial concentration of B here actually halves. Now, because that's halving, we know that the initial rate is going to have a change. And because the B is second order, we know that the initial rate is going to quarter. So we should anticipate that we put into this box just here, a divide by four version of this rate quoted still to three significant figures because we want to maintain the precision pre-existing already in the table. And the value here is 2.60 times 10 to the power of minus three. Now, solving that gap in the table is purely done using logic of knowledge of the orders of reaction and their impact on the rate. But it isn't always going to be quite that straightforward. For example, if we move over straight away to considering, let's say, this gap here, which is for the initial concentration of A in experiment three, it's not going to be quite so straightforward. If we have a look at the changes that are taking place elsewhere in the table, we do get some clues. We've got that the initial concentration of B, which is second order, remember, is doubling. And so if B was the only thing that changed here from experiment one to experiment three, then the rate, because B is second order, the rate would quadruple, it would times by four. But almost for fun, it's decided to divide by two. Now, that doesn't mean that it didn't multiply by four. It absolutely certainly still would. Just because we're going to be looking at a change in the initial concentration of A doesn't mean that the changes that B would have had on the rate of reaction don't take place. What we're saying is B would have caused it to change to something and then A has brought it back to this alternative quantity. Now we know for certain, therefore, so if we're looking at experiment one to experiment three, we know that the initial concentration of B has doubled. B is second order, so is order two. Therefore, the rate should have times four. Now, that would have taken the rate to a value of 0 0.0416 moles per decimeter cube per second. So if nothing else was taking place 
and all we had was an initial rate value of 10.4 times 10 to the power of negative 3, and our initial concentration of B, which is second order, doubled, then the rate would have changed to that, 0 0.0416. But it hasn't changed to that. Instead, it's changed to 5.2 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So the next thing we need to consider is, how do I get from that 5 point, sorry, how do I get from that 0 0.0416 to the 5.2 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So some simple maths. If we do 0 0.0416 divided by the 5.2 times 10 to the power of minus 3, we get a value of 8. So what that tells me is, B being second order, when it doubled, the rate quadrupled and would have gone up to 0 0.0416 moles per decimeter cubed per second. However, something brought it back all the way down to 5.2 times 10 to the power of minus 3, half its original quantity from experiment 1. And what brought it down all that way was the change in the initial concentration of A. In order to get from the 0 0.0416 all the way back down to the 5.2 times 10 to the power of negative 3, the initial concentration of 8 would have had to divide by 8. And that takes us to a value in here of 6.00 times 10 to the power of minus 3. That's one way to fill in this gap on the table. But there is another way. Alternatively, what you can do, and this is to fill in the same gap, the exact same gap. Instead of using the idea of knowing how the orders of reaction impact the rates and observing other changes that are taking place on the table, what we can do instead is calculate the rate constant K and use that. Because what we do know for certain is that for experiments 1, 2, 3 and 4, because we're assuming they're all held at the same temperature, the rate constant, K, is the same for all of those experiments. No matter what the changes in concentration and rate are, the rate constant is constant. So what I can do is using my rearranged version of the rate equation from the top of the question, so we can see that's rate equals K times the concentration of A, which is first order, times the concentration of B, which is second order. We can change that so it's K equals rate divided by the concentration of A and the concentration of B squared. I then input data from experiment one. The reason I'm choosing experiment one, not experiment two, considering they're both now filled in, is because experiment one was given to me by the exam question. I may have made a mistake with my data on experiment two, it's not likely, but still. So here what I do is use all of my experiment one data, and I get a value for the rate constant K equal to 49.74, or 49.7, if you will. I'm not going to worry too much about the units just yet for that, but the units for this would actually be mole to the minus 2, decimeters to the 6, s to the power of minus 1. Now, what I can do, now that I have that value, is for that exact same gap in the table... I can rearrange the rate equation as a subject of A. So now what I do is I have A equals rate again on the numerator divided by the rate constant K times the concentration of B squared. And this time, unlike my previous calculation a moment ago, this time what I'm going to do is to find this gap in experiment 3 for the initial concentration of A, which is my subject, this value here, when I get it, I'm going to use the other data for experiment 3. So I'm going to use the rate for experiment 3, which is 5.2 times 10 to the power of negative 3. I'm going to use the initial concentration of B for experiment 3, which is 13.2 times 10 to the power of minus 2. And I'm going to use the rate constant K, which I know is the same for all four reactions. And my answer for the initial concentration of A 
comes out as, I believe, 5.99999 and so on recurring times 10 to the power of minus 3, which to three significant figures is 6.00. times 10 to the power of minus 3. Moles per decimeter cubed. So you've got two different ways of filling in the gaps for the concentrations. You can, of course, use this method as well for the initial rate. You've just got to make sure you put everything in right. And actually, you don't need to do any sort of rearrangement because rate is already the subject. But you might find you're slightly quicker just by using knowledge of what the orders of reaction mean, like I did at the start. So we can use this exact same method here for the other gap we've currently got in the table. So this gap just here is for the initial concentration of B. So if I wanted to find that, I could make B the subject of my equation. And what I would need to do is the square root of everything else from the rate equation at that point rearranged correctly. So that would be rate divided by the concentration of A times K. Remember, it's square root because B is second order in that rearrangement. So that's the rate for experiment four. That's the concentration of A for experiment four. And that's the rate constant K, which we figured out will be constant for all four runs of the experiment. And the value that's going into this box is going to be 0 0.114. There are, of course, or there is, of course, I should say, the alternative way of filling this uh, final box in, which uses the idea of logic from the table. So let me explain that version as well, just in case you're curious over this. Going from experiment one to experiment four, We've got that the initial concentration of A here is changing by divide by 3. Now that's first order. A is first order according to the rate equation we were given at the start of this. So that means the initial rate, if B doesn't change, will have a directly proportional change to the change in the concentration of A. And so we should expect this to go down by the same amount if B isn't changing. But unfortunately, it stays the same. So that means the change in B is directly opposing the change in A. And the way to get B, considering its second order, to change in a directly proportional contrast to the change in A is to change it by times root 3. Because times root 3 squared, because it's second order, will mean that it impacts the rate in a times 3 format. So change in A would be divided by 3 on the rate, and change in B would be times 3 on the rate. But that root 3 aspect may throw you off a bit. So it may be better to use the alternative method that I identified below, which is find the value of K and then rearrange the equation as a subject. It doesn't matter which one you do, so long as whichever method you've got, you get it right. You get it right swiftly, quickly, and under the pressure of an exam. If you're doing maths or physics A-level, you should definitely be doing the rearrangement because that should be your skill set. Thank you very much for watching. And if you did find this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. For more videos on Module 5 of the OCRA specification, please click the links on screen now. And until next time, Happy revising.